<sighs> well, good morning, flower friends. I did not expect the sun. It was cloudy. <laughs> now the sun's coming and hitting me right in the eyeballs, but that's okay. We're going to keep going. If you hear noise in the background, that is some tree guys just down the alley. There's an alley that runs between the house you see back there and my back garden. Um, and it's great access, fire road, whatever, but they're down there taking down some big trees that are uh, compromised and in risk of falling on someone's house, which that would be devastating. But anyways, that's the noise you hear in the background. This is May 1st, May 1st, and this is my May 1st garden tour. Now the snow melted maybe a week ago completely, maybe two weeks. Um, we were working on wouldn't you know it? I need to get my sunglasses. We were working on the vegetable garden area and getting my little greenhouse set up and I gave you, the, I did the video for that. Um, so now I'm starting to able to clean up the area from the snow damage, the secret cottage garden, the side garden where I'm putting my rose alley, which I did show you the video of that. You can go back, I'll link it and see my ideas for that. Um, and as I was cleaning up back here, I mean, back here, I. Another rose was eaten almost to death by a gopher. It was a beautiful vintage road, rose called Rains de Violets. And um, so I'm trying to rethink what I'm gonna do back here. I could put one of the raised beds with the mesh bottom back there, but I wasn't, you know, I have to get so much fill dirt to fill them in and it was gonna slow down things. And I didn't really want that. And I'm, I'm trying to really be thoughtful in what I do because I don't want to do it 10 times. And I'm trying to go to a more uh, easier care, easier maintenance garden. So, but still enjoy it. I love working out here, but having to redo it all over again, and that's kind of what I'm having to do this year because of the extreme snows. I lost a lot of plants um, this winter, but I see what's that survived it all what really was tough, what didn't survive it. And um, so I'm kind of leaning into the things that were really tough and hardy and are coming back. I will always have annuals. I know I can pop in annuals. And like the daffodils, I'll show you this tub of daffodils, which is just pure delight right now. Um, hi, Reuben, this is Reuben. He wants to be in there. This is our uh, Sylvester. He looks so much like Sylvester. He's big and fluffy, though he's skinny underneath of you. Anyways, his sister's much chubbier and short hair, and she looks like a puma. Anyways, um, sorry, I got cut off, but so we'll start right here. This is the vegetable garden that we did the video on, and I showed you how we put up the little greenhouse. And then right along here, now this obelisk is probably going to move. Let me undo this. Um, it fell over and it's got some broken spots, but anyways, I don't need it here. I'm going to put up something different. We'll see. It, I'm always changing my mind, but I have a few things staged here in pots, but right here, you see this spot right here? This was filled with a big clump of iris. It was the most beautiful iris. I will put a picture here if I can find it swiftly enough. And you can see, you can see a few rhizomes down in there, but for the most part, the rest are gone. They were eaten by the gophers. I've never had such devastation, but it was a very long, hard winter, deep, deep snows, and I guess they needed a food source and thought that that particular clump was yummy because they managed to just wipe it out. So beyond it is um, some daffodils. Thankfully, they came back. Um, at the base of this obelisk, there is a clematis. It seems to be coming back and doing okay, but it's not real vigorous growth. And that one's never really grown vigorously here. So I think I need to move it somewhere. And maybe I'll even put it in the pot with one of the climbing roses over there beside the, the greenhouse, the mini greenhouse. Um, I think maybe the soil's too sandy and they like some moisture retentive soil in the summers. But let's move around. Let me see if I can do this gently. I, I have a brand new gimbal which is supposed to help me move more smoothly for you, and I can't figure out how to use it yet. It's a little more complicated than just plopping the camera on it. But my uh, climbing roses, this is my um, iceberg, white iceberg climbing, coming up over the arbor. It looks great. 
This one I do believe is either Passionate Kisses or I can't remember. Oh, Portlandia. I think it's Portlandia. Um, this one is Colette. It took a real beating. I had to really trim it back. So we'll see what kind of blooms I get on it. And the bamboo next to it is one of my bamboos that we divided off from the bigger parent plant. So I just have it plopped there just to kind of block the view, side view of the little greenhouse from the secret cottage garden, which is what we're in now. You see back here, I got some delphiniums coming up. Those are pink or lavender. There's another one next to it that I think is white and I think it got eaten to death by the slugs. So I put out some of my new Saturday lime. I'm not sure it will repel slugs. I'm testing it, we'll see. And then over here, this is uh, an echinops which is real pretty, the spiky blue balls of the flowers look like. Anyway, so this garden bed, um, it still has Monarda in it. I think it has the red Monarda. I don't know if it has the purple, but that just climbs and it, uh, not climbs, it rhizomes under, not rhizomes, what is it? Oh, the roots just climb under the soil and they come up everywhere. And I pull up a lot because I only want them in certain areas. Um, and then I let them fill in in others. But it's another thing, it's very aromatic. Therefore, I think that's why the gophers don't bother it. But that's one of those easy plants I'm keeping in my garden because the gophers won't disturb it. Now over there is underneath, under here is my um, moss heart, but it kind of, the gophers really tunneled around it. So they dumped a bunch of dirt on top of the moss. So it's kind of obscured, but I will clean that up. Um, so along this garden bed here, you see my container over there of daffodils. That thing is just gorgeous. And there's a miniature daffodil. I'll have to look up the name, but I'm just finding, and they're so sweet smelling, but I'm finding them so delightful. Um, a little birdhouse. Let's get over. I'll move to where you can really see that section better. But, um, over there in that garden bed, there's more iris. There's a vintage climbing rose there. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it offhand, I can't. I have, um, this is a purple smoke bush standard, right? I think I'm pointing at it. I can't see my little screen very well. Um, and it did well, and I think it was because it was supported by the fence behind it. It didn't snap off in those heavy, heavy snows. Uh, I have a bamboo in a pot next to it, but back there is where the other rose was, right along the block wall, that retaining wall is where the gophers seem to tunnel very heavily. So I, they don't eat lilacs, and I have some lilacs, um, vintage or common lilacs, but it, they're a dark, dark purple. And I may put them back there and prune them into a tree shape. Um, and then, you know, for some reason, like I said, the gophers don't seem to bother those. I'm sorry for all the clutter. I haven't been able to get out here and really start cleaning um, because everything got moved around when we were doing the vegetable garden. So we've got raised beds we pulled up just sitting around. I've got to figure out where I'm going to put them. I had thought of putting one of these behind the bench over there and putting the mesh under it. I have a couple of bobo hydrangeas as well that I had thought of putting back there, but I don't know what the gopher, you know, the tunnels being so thick in there, if they would eat those, if maybe I should go ahead and set up one of these raised beds with the mesh and then put the hydrangeas in the raised bed. Again, I said earlier that my hold back is I have to then go buy a bunch of fill dirt, garden dirt to put in there instead of using the dirt that's in the ground. I guess I can dig it down a little bit, but um, it's just additional work time. I guess more than work. I'm out here working all the time, but here's a couple more. Now over here in this bed, there's flocks coming up, common garden flocks. That's a white, beautiful white. I loved them. They're getting thicker. Um, the gophers did not bother them at all either. So I'm thinking of dividing that, digging up and dividing it, and then putting a piece over here. If I don't put the bobo hydrangeas there, I'm trying not to get too much in one bed. So I have to settle on a plan and go with it. But those are just some of my ideas. Um, now the, the iris over here, they didn't bother. I have a clematis that climbs up at HF Young, I think it is, next to my tool shed. And um, what else is in there that I saw that was coming back? Oh, one of my oriental poppies. Um, one got eaten there last summer by the gophers, and then another one's popping up. So we'll see how that works if they eat it. I have 
gotten rid of one gopher here in this section. I don't know if he was it, but I know more will move in, even if he was. So um, I am constantly trying to do deterrence, anything that will help salvage my plants back here. Here's my, the, the little daffodils are in that bed too with also some larger growing but daffodils. Um, I'm not sure that that was more fully planted than it looks. I'm not sure what happened, but I did find gopher tunnels inside of it. That did not get the mesh underneath. Um, and there was some tulips. I see there's just one, two tulips, three tulips that have come up. So I know the gophers ate the tulips, but of course they always leave the daffodils. Around it, I have a brick marker um, edging, and I do have some small boxwoods that I started from cuttings, and I'll take you up and look at those. Um, I started this boxwoods from cuttings. I just plopped them in the soil and let them take off. They're just, they're struggling because after the snow, they really had a hard time. And also the gophers have been tunneling under there. So um, they haven't seemed to have eaten them, but I know when they tunnel all around them, they leave air gaps underneath the soil and it, it plants struggle. So I try to dig around and I fill those tunnels and then the, the roots can keep growing without hitting those air gaps. So this is one of the side beds. I'm gonna give you a perspective. There's this, the center piece. And then here's a bed. It did have a path going from here to there, but it was unnecessary. I have a path over here and I have a path over here. So this I'm gonna fill in and be one garden bed instead of it having a path through it. Here is one of my raised beds. I have it here. There's the wire mesh, and I'm gonna put it here because this was a very bad spot for gophers last year. Now there are some plants coming up. In fact, you can see down there, I had um, some lilies planted in a pot in the ground, and that saved them from being eaten. Um, but there's other things like um, this red campion, and uh, I think that's the red campion. Maybe that's the white one, the rose campion that in white called Alba or something. Anyways, um, and then there's some daisies over there. Uh, right here is where my lime, um, lime, what is it? Nicotiana, Nicotiana as some people pronounce it. Um, and that will come back from seed, I think. It did last year, so we'll see. And I have some roses in their pots here because the gophers had started eating on them. But if I get this raised bed in and filled, I can put some of the roses in it. Um, the roses seem to do really well in this section. So I have roses in pots over here as well. So um, if I do like a couple of these raised beds, I could put the susceptible, gopher susceptible plants in them have them protected and then they can grow on without being disturbed. The only one thing I noticed when these raised beds were over in the vegetable area and the gophers came, they tunneled underneath it and left air gaps, which that can pose a problem too because when the roots hit those air gaps, they just stop growing. Um, but we'll see, maybe I can shovel underneath and, not shovel underneath, but shovel into the bed and then scrape the soil down now it's very fine. This is like a half inch um, hardware cloth. And so if I put my shovel down in there and wiggle it, some of the soil will fall back into those air gaps, I'm pretty sure. So let's walk around. I'm trying to do this slow. Uh, Gophers devastated some. Oh dear, I threw this over here. You can see a gopher hole right there. You see that little dark hole? Yeah, that's underneath. They don't eat the... Um, daisies, but right here is, a, this was called <laughs> um, pumpkin cheesecake. That is a iris, and um, they really dug around it, buried it deep, whatever, so I kind of was able to excavate it out slightly, and I'm hoping, against all hope, odds that it will recover. I don't know that I'd get a bloom this year because it really struggled. Now, one thing that they don't bother in my garden is hardy geraniums. This is called Bill Wallace, and it reseeds itself. I just dug up one over here, transplanted it over in another area, because anything that's gonna 
thrive like that is a winner in my garden. And they're just so pretty. This one has little purple flowers. Back there is Junior's Walker Low uh, Catnip or Catmint. And it is also one that the gophers don't, don't bother. And I have cat's pajamas up along the side garden and love it. So more of that. And they don't bother it and it just blooms all summer. I have some Calamintha, which is related in here that I started from seed. Next to you see this poor little boxwood. It looks devastated, but it's got new growth. So um, it's going to remain. And I have others all the way around in this section. So this should fill in just really pretty. So I wanted you to give you a close up of this. Isn't this gorgeous? Gorgeous, gorgeous. And they smell so pretty. One tulip survived. That tulip was from last year. I didn't plant any new tulips this year in here. Um, but over here, this is another hardy geranium. This one I think is called Phyllis. I got that at the Botanical Gardens in Mendocino. I love to buy a plant when I can as a um, reminder of the gardens I visit. Um, I planted this little chimney piece and put a pot bottom terracotta pot bottom on it for a little bird bath. I just thought it would dress it up. So that's the section, if you saw my little greenhouse video, right down here behind it, that's the little area that uh, I could plant something like cucumbers to grow up along the fence or whatever. And it, I, I need every square inch in my garden I can use. So I waste no space. Now right here is my proven winners, quick fire fab hydrangea, panicle hydrangea, and it seems to be doing good. It seems to like it here. That's why I'm thinking my bobo hydrangeas will do really well back here behind this bench because it seems to like this location. Maybe it's the amount of sun it gets, etc. But um, I was afraid to put them directly in the soil, but you know, the gophers left that one alone, so maybe it wouldn't eat my panicle hydrangeas. They wouldn't eat my panicle hydrangeas and or I'll just have to keep putting my deterrent down. Anyways, like I said, right now I have a bamboo back here and the smoke bush. I was so happy that they didn't bother my smoke bush. But this rose will climb up this obelisk. Hopefully you can see my ugly little propane tank back there for the house or a big propane tank, whatever you want to call it. Also the foxgloves. I know foxgloves, the gophers do not eat them. So these ones reseed themselves. I'll let them reseed in here heavily, even if I plant the bobo hydrangeas, because by the time the hydrangeas bloom, um, the foxgloves and other things will be done, as well as lilacs, if I put the lilacs back there. And here's Reuben again, sitting right in the middle of the garden bed. But you can see another pot right behind them that I have lilies in. In fact, it reminds me I have lily bulbs in my basement that I need to get out and pot up. I've been so, so busy with the veggie garden area that um, uh, I'm, I shouldn't say I'm behind. I know I'm gonna have a lot of cleanup work out here after the snow finally melted. Where other gardeners across the country, they were able to get out earlier, even if it was cold, I couldn't. This was under feet and feet of snow. So this area over here is where I really need to tackle um, and get cleaned up. This pile of fir bark mulch right here. I'm gonna use it to make a path to my little veggie greenhouse. That's what I should call it, my veggie greenhouse, or potager greenhouse. How's that? Sounds fancier, huh? I have some hydrangeas back there that are budding out. Hopefully we won't get too hard of a freeze. With the, what's freezing cold, my hand is like ice right now. Um, we may. Last year they really got zapped, my hydrangeas did, from the late May freeze. And um, I did get some hydrangeas from these ones here. These were to a rescue from a garden, uh, like a Lowe's or whatever. Um, beautiful, they're reblooming though. So I'm a crush and um, I did get some hydrangeas blooms on those. The other two are the mop heads that don't rebloom. They bloom on old wood. So those ones I didn't get any blooms on, but they, they lived through it. So I'm pleased, I'm pleased in, uh, about that. Oh, I've just stepped in a pathway and it squished really bad. It means there's go for a tunnel under it. Okay, so I gotta work on that. But here's just a bunch of things in pots until I can get them put in the ground. Um, this, these two roses are Coco Loco. So I'll put them up in bigger pots and see, maybe I'll put those in those containers next to the veggie greenhouse with the climbing rose. Those pots are big enough to have two roses in them. 
um, especially if it's a climbing and a bush, then I think those would be pretty there. So I've always things popping in my head. I did lose a few of my Japanese maples, but I have a few that are leafing out and they made it shockingly. Look at this. I want to show you this. Whoops. I'm so sorry. Daffodil. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that salmon -y color and that ruffly trumpet. And then look at this one. This one over here. Isn't that, it reminds me of meringue, lemon meringue pie. Isn't that gorgeous? I will get the names for you. I know, um, I think these are the ones I got from Color Blends. So this is my boxwood back here. This one, I don't know what variety it is, but it has been so tough. A friend gave it to me. And um, it's been much tougher than the winter gym and others I have. So I've been trying to take cuttings from it to get more. Now here's a couple of the cuttings right down here. You can see they're tremendously smaller, but they will fill in. And I want to fill in all along this pathway, gravel pathway, um, with the boxwoods and the around the centerpiece because that'll give me evergreen and that's something I really want because that can really make it a lot nicer this time of year when nothing else is really blooming but here's my little pots I'm doing for my father-in-law they have geraniums um, some wave white wave petunias and some sweet potato vine in them and I got to take them down to him soon. But I wanted you to see how beautiful. I just now pruned this one up. Now you see it's got big gaps and that's because the snow really crushes it and it does fill back in for the summer. But this time of year, it looks a little sad because of it going through such a winter. But consider this thing had eight feet of snow on it. So, you know, not too bad. And what I, this is my Japanese, my Crimson Queen Japanese maple. I was so worried about it. This thing was underneath that eight feet of snow. And though it's kind of leaning that direction, I can pull it up and stake it for it growing more upright. But I'm just thrilled that it didn't get crushed and killed during all the snow that we had. So another win. So over here is my staging area. You can see all my roses that I got bare root or pots that are gonna go in the rose alley. And I have more things staged over here. This was the clematis I got off the clearance rack. I mean, I got that thing so dirt cheap. I think it was Lowe's and um, it's just beautiful filling in now. I need, that's gonna go in the rose alley. And here's a boxwood. I think I was gonna try to prune it into a topiary chicken shape, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make it a ball shape for now. And I can, you know, they grow. I can maybe do a chicken shape later, but it's kind of sprawled out from the snow deep snow being on it. Now over there, that is a raised bed next to the greenhouse. I'm gonna turn that into a cold frame for starting my warm weather annuals and um, I'll cover it. And it gets sun there and also gets radiant heat from the little green, the greenhouse here, being right up next to it. So that's a good place to start those instead of starting them in the house on the racks. So over there in that barrel is a lilac. Isn't that lilac doing beautiful? It seems to love it there. I'm hoping if I plant some along the back fence line, they'll do as beautifully. Um, I can't remember what color that one is. Uh, it'll have to bloom. I have white, I have a fuchsia color, and I have a deep purple and a light lilac color. So my rose is going on this arbor. This is the kind of arbor I want for my rose alley. But that one over there, I think is Viking Queen. And then right here is Kiss Me Kate. And this one was just gorgeous. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna leave these here. I may, it, it adds, it dresses up this area that ends up being, well, I tried to do my everlasting cutting garden here and it didn't work. And this right now, it's just collection of the stuff we've been cleaning out. That's the watering or irrigation system for my veggie garden area. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyways, I have different ideas of what I'm gonna do here. So we'll see how I dress this up this year. This is the poor rose that the gophers ate. It's soaking right now. And that is the bobo hydrangea I dug up and then suddenly couldn't plant because I found that that area was so ridden with gophers 
that it wouldn't work. Now in here, look, this is a barrel that's sat here forever. I'm sure the bottom has been rotted out and gophers come up in it, but look at the couple of ferns coming up. I think I'm gonna let them stay. Usually I pull them out because I have other things growing. Um, and the tall grassy thing, that's the leaves of the iris reticulata that bloomed in here last month. But I had put the seeds of my uh, grape, Lauren's grape, that's what it is. Lauren's grape. I'm hoping that they will sprout. A lot of my seeds, I saved a bazillion because I wanted to spread them around. Um, there's Reuben again. Um, anyways, the, the mice ate them in my greenhouse. I didn't know that they ate them. Probably felt pretty good after eating all them poppy seeds. Okay, another shot of my roses. Oh, and there's my little chickens, my girls. And of course, this chicken house will get spruced up too. And I will put, I think I'm gonna put another uh, lattice here, trellis, and have something grow up the side. But anyways, one parting shot of the vegetable garden. I will see you in my next video, I hope. And I'll, I'll certainly bring you along when I spruce this up. So I hope you enjoyed my little May 1st garden tour. And even after all this rain and snow this week, you will be surprised by the end of the month what this looks like and how well it fills in. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little tour. I know I wasn't the smoothest with my camera work, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you wanna see what I'm doing with the Rose Alley, go back and view that video. Um, that's going to be really pretty and I'm going to be working. That's where my focus is going to be. That's why I want everything else to be kind of on the easier, lower maintenance side. Um, and yeah, because I really want to get that in place and established and I want to do it right. So it's going to take me some effort, time and concentration to do it, to keep it safe from the gophers, to make sure it can make it through the rough winters and all of that. And I wanna make sure I put tough plants in there so because I don't wanna to have to redo it, um, unless I want to, who knows? I'm always changing things around here. Alrighty, I will see you in the next video and we'll see what the front garden's gonna look like. It's about as <clears throat> shabby as my back, but it is what it is this time of year, but it will be beautiful come midsummer, I promise. All right, I'll see you later.